Obama appointed Islamic Society official to approve Uranium One sale. www.rightsidernews.com Originally posted on Big League Politics by Mary Fanning and Alan Jones the Obama administration placed Ayman Nabi Mir, former two-time president of the youth wing of the Islamic Society of North America, ISNA, into the top advisory position to the Committee on Foreign Investment in the United States, CFIUS, a national security post at the Treasury Department. Ayman Mir was the CFIUS staff chairperson from 2009 until 2014. During that time, Ayman Mir played a key role in the CFIUS panel's decision to approve the sale of Uranium One to Russia's Rosatom. Mir also played a key role in the Treasury Department's refusal to investigate the UAE's Gulf Tainer 35 year cargo container terminal lease at Port Canaveral, a critical military infrastructure facility for U.S. naval and space operations. Both decisions severely damaged United States national security. Ayman Mir helped set the table for Vladimir Putin to seize control of over 20% of U.S. uranium and was part of the decision that awarded control of Port Canaveral's cargo container terminal to Saddam Hussein's rogue nuclear weapons scientist and designated Iraq war enemy combatant, Drive Jafadi Jafar. Dr. Jafar's brother and business partner, Gulf Tainer co-owner Hamid Jafar, was under investigation by the Treasury Department and four congressional committees for his oil for superweapons scheme in concert with Saddam Hussein. For starters, Ayman Mir's ISNA connections are troubling. ISNA is one of the largest Muslim Brotherhood front groups in the U.S. and was named by the Department of Justice as an unindicted co-conspirator in the 2008 Holy Land Foundation Hamas terror funding trial. Further, Ayman Mir is the son of Kashmir-born physician Dr. Ghulam Nabi Mir, an ISNA Founders Committee member. Dr. Mir is also the president of the World Kashmir Awareness Forum, WKAF, an Islamic platform Dr. Mir uses to aggressively advocate for Kashmir's secession from India in order to join Pakistan. CAF's Secretary General Dr. Syed Ghulam Nabi Fai, is a convicted felon, also from Kashmir, who served as a Pakistani Inter-Services Intelligence Directorate, ISI, operative inside the United States. Fai was arrested by the FBI in 2011 for covertly operating as an unregistered foreign agent while receiving $3.5 million in wire transfers from the IC. Fai used some of that money to fund an elaborate lobbying operation pushing Kashmiri independence on unsuspecting U.S. officials who remained seemingly unaware that Pakistan was running the operation. In 2013, Fai was granted early release from U.S. federal prison by the Justice Department. Like his father's IC partner Fai, Ayman Mir appears to have been running his own operation at CFIUS. Ayman Mir was the CFIUS staff chairperson from 2009 until 2014. During Mir's five years in the staff chairperson's seat, CFIUS approved Russia's 2010 purchase of Uranium One, effectively handing Vladimir Putin control of 20% of America's uranium. Also during Mir's term, the Treasury Department refused to conduct two legally required CFIUS investigations of Port Canaveral's 2014 container terminal lease concession to the UAE's Gulf Tainer. The Gulf Tainer deal effectively placed Saddam Hussein's nuclear weapons mastermind, Dr. Jafardia Jafar, along with his longtime Russian KGB SVR and Iranian regime associates and the UAE Emir inside the wire of a national security sensitive U.S. port. Gulf Tainer misrepresented its true ownership, facts that Mir could and should have uncovered easily. A World Bank International Finance Corporation, IFC, document, now scrubbed from the IFC website, proved that Gulf Tainer was owned in part by Sultan bin Mohammed al Qasimi, the Emir of Sharjah, UAE. Under the Foreign Investment National Security Act of 2007, FINSA, Foreign government ownership of an acquiring entity automatically triggers a mandatory CFIUS review, regardless of whether the transaction is a purchase or a lease. Ayman Mir understood CFIUS and FINSA law and chose to ignore it, as did Treasury Secretary Jacob Jacklew and Commerce Secretary Penny Pritzker. 
In 2014 the Treasury Department promoted Eamon Mia to Deputy Assistant Secretary for Investment Security after the Clinton Foundation connected Uranium One and Gulf Tainer Port Canaveral deals closed. Mia's LinkedIn profile and post-Trump administration inauguration posts show he's still at the Treasury Department, now as a career civil servant. In Gulf Tainer's case, the supposedly rigorous CFIUS National Security Review process for direct foreign investment transactions was completely and stunningly bypassed. An email released by WikiLeaks implicates Gulf Tainer and the Clintons in a pay-to-play operation involving the Port Canaveral deal. Both Uranium One and Gulf Tainer have deep ties to Russian intelligence, nuclear weapons, and uranium enrichment. Gulf Tainer has additional ties to the Iranian regime and to the architects of Obama's Iran nuclear deal. Gulf Tainer Executive Board Chairman Badr Jafar visited the White House in 2014, six weeks before the secretly negotiated Gulf Tainer deal was announced, signed, and closed. According to Eamon Mir's LinkedIn profile, since graduating from Georgetown in 2000, he never served in any national security position before his Sophia's chairperson appointment. Mears' work experience was as an immigration attorney at Wilma Cutler Pickering Hale and or LLP, Wilma Hale, representing people from the Middle East seeking asylum in the United States. CFI US staff members such as staff chairperson Mia wield tremendous power in the CFI US process workflow. They conduct research and make recommendations to cabinet level CFI US board members or their designated representatives and, through omission, can conceal from those cabinet members critical national security information about foreign companies looking to invest in U.S. based operations. If a CFI US application is approved before advancing from the 30 day initial review to an additional 45 day investigation involving 16 US intelligence agencies, dangerous deals like Uranium One and Gulf Tainer deals can fly under the radar of the intelligence community. According to a 2015 Breitbart report on CFI US review of the Uranium One deal, Surprisingly the 2009 annual report submitted to Congress by CFI US inaccurately described this approved transaction by stating the company acquiring a minority interest was Canadian rather than Russian. Breitbart contacted Eamon Mir at the time of that report to ask him if the Uranium One transaction was subjected to a secondary 45-day review but received no response. The Committee of Foreign Investment in the United States 2015 Annual Report to Congress Public Slash Unclassified Version, released over a year late, reveals that between 2013 and 2015, there were no covered transactions in the transportation sector involving acquirers from the UAE. In other words, the Treasury Department determined that the Gulf Tainer deal was not a covered transaction and therefore CFIUS did not conduct the required investigation of the deal. That determination was likely made by Eamon Mir and it kept Gulf Tainer and U.S. designated enemy combatant Dr. Jafar off the intelligence community's radar. The Treasury Department determined that a CFIUS review was not required for Gulf Tainer's Port Canaveral deal. According to a 2015 Orlando Sentinel report, Representative Duncan Hunter, R. San Diego, had asked for a formal Treasury Department review of security issues due to a foreign-owned company operating port facilities. Port spokeswoman Rosalind Harvey said that never happened. After extensive filing of all required paperwork to U.S. Treasury Department officials, the panel found that no review was required because the agreement was a lease and not a purchase of port assets, Harvey said. Unfortunately, there is more. James Ricards, author and former advisor to the Committee on Foreign Investment in the United States, CFIUS, support group of the Director of National Intelligence, DNI, stated in an October 18, 2017 tweet that Director of National Intelligence James R. Clapper disbanded the CFI US DNI advisory group before Uranium One. It is noteworthy that Director Clapper went before Congress to testify under oath that the NSA, CIA, and other intelligence agencies were not collecting massive amounts of telephonic and internet metadata on hundreds of millions of innocent American citizens. Revelations by whistleblower Edward Snowden proved otherwise. 
Subsequently Director Clapper was found to have been untruthful and resigned on November 17, 2016, effective the day Donald Trump was sworn in, January 20, 2017. Clapper has not been prosecuted for perjury. CFI US rules are clear about what constitutes a covered transaction apostrophe colon considering the post 9-11 national meltdown over the UAE's Dubai Ports World deal, it is inconceivable that the Gulf Tainer deal would have received approval without a thorough intelligence review. The congressional enactment of the Foreign Investment National Security Act of 2007, FINSA, was designed to heavily reinforce CFI US in order to prevent a repeat of Dubai Port's world debacle. The Gulf Dana, GT USA, Port Canaveral 35 year concession is subject to CFI US review because Gulf Dana is responsible for safety and security and makes all substantial business decisions at the Canaveral cargo terminal. Gulf Dana oversees day to day operation of the Canaveral cargo terminal. Port Canaveral is critical infrastructure for commercial maritime, military sea lift, surface naval, submarine naval, commercial space, and military space operations. Gulf Tainer's cargo terminal is near four military bases, two USAF, one USN, and one USCG. Gulf Tainer's cargo terminal is near NASA's Kennedy Space Center. Gulf Tainer's cargo terminal is near the Eastern Range, critical for space missions and missile testing. Gulf Tainer is partly owned by a foreign government, ruler of Sharjah, UAE, Iraq is involved in WMD production, Jafar family, possibly other senior Iraqi military figures, and in business with Russian specially designated nationals, SDNs. It is unclear how Ayman Mir was able to obtain a security clearance. Also, the real Russia Gate scandal.